Hey, this is Colt Eastwood. Thanks a lot for coming to my channel and watching a video because I've got kind of a special treat for you. I've recorded some of my favorite games at the highest quality settings I can muster. But the reason why I've done this is I want to show you a nice little presentation of the difference between 30 and 60 FPS because it's super important to gaming and I want to show you why. And I'm going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons and I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you're watching on a mobile device, go to your settings and if you have mobile data left, please change this to 1080p 60 so you can see this video in all its gloriousness. If you're watching on a desktop, you should already have that ready to rock. It's super important for you to see the difference. There's been a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons of gaming running at 30 and 60, but I really feel what I have chosen will make a great case of why it's so important for games to run at 60 FPS, even on our consoles and the consoles to come. So enjoy. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. We're not going to get technical because, as you guys know, Colt isn't all that technical, and I've absorbed as much information as I can, but these things are super important. Here we go. All right, now let's talk about frame rate and look at this dirt rally footage I record on PC. Now there's no trickery here and go. So we're looking at 30 frames per second, 1080p ultra settings, 30 frames per second. Watch this. I want you to watch really closely. Everything looks good. The game is running at a stable 30 frames per second and we're going to switch to 60 frames in three, in two. One there. Okay, look at this. See the difference? Can you tell the difference? Now, let me change it back for you. There's a difference between unstable frame rates where they aren't steady and they're dropping, they're fluctuating, and we're back to 60 frames. The difference is visual information being brought to the screen like a flip book. Every time a frame is shown, in 60 frames you're seeing it twice as much. So you get the sense of of motion, which video games are doing, they are tricking our minds into thinking all of these rendered high resolution JPEGs. It is tricking our brains into thinking that we are seeing motion. Let's go back to 30. But when you're looking at 30 frames per second, you almost start moving towards a film look, which is at 24 frames per second. Film is a different process than video games because the camera creates motion blur and video games have to artificially put it in. That's a bad thing. Motion blur actually taxes the GPU and the CPU. Think of a first person shooter that runs at 60 frames like Battlefield 1 or the Call of Duty games. They run a nice smooth frame rate and you'll notice that things look shinier. If you go back and play a game that isn't in 60 frames, which is most games on console, you'll notice that shimmer, that shine, that smooth crisp look is gone all because of frame rate. Right now we're in 30 frames per second. Can you tell the difference? You'll start to notice that that smooth, Fluid movement is gone. Let's go back to 60 frames. Now remember, I haven't done anything to this footage other than convert it to 30 frames from 60. On consoles, they make a compromise and bring down textures and bring down effects to get games to run on consoles. They bring 30 frames instead of 60 frames with that package on a console game. Especially open world games, there's very few exceptions. Metal Gear Solid 5 is one exception where the game is open world, 60 frames, and 1080 or 900p on consoles. But look at Doom here running 60 FPS. It runs 60 FPS on consoles and PC. It just makes a better presentation. More proof that the new consoles weren't really up to the standard we'd come to expect that we can get last gen games remastered, ported up at 60 frames like Bulletstorm the Handsome Collection, Halo Master Chief Collection. So here's another case where they can get an older game to run at 60 FPS but not a current game. Now let's look at Bulletstorm at 60 FPS the way it was recorded live on my PC at Ultra Settings. See the difference? Here, let me go back. That's 30, and here's 60. Are you starting to see the difference yet? Here's Batman Arkham Knight on PC running at 1080p 30 frames per second, and here's an example where 30 frames looks downright ugly. I don't know what it is about this render. It looks terrible to me. And to prove it, I'm going to show you what it looks like at 60 frames. There, doesn't that look better? <laughs> the way it was meant to be played. 
This is Batman Arkham Knight running ultra across the board at 1080p, 60 frames per second. And if you want to keep arguing with me about getting 4K or checkerboard 4K, or as I call it, faux k none of that matters. Frame rate is king. Here's Batman again in 30 frames, looking as flittery and juddery in a stable frame rate as possible. I prefer 60 and watch. Here it comes. See, this is what you're missing. If you purely play on Xbox or PS4, you only have a cursory knowledge of 60 frames. Unless you're a huge Call of Duty fan or you play a lot of sports games, there are very few in the grand scheme of the library on console that play at 60 FPS. What are there, uh, around a thousand games on each console? I would guess, and this is just a number I'm pulling out of my rear end, there's probably about two or 300 games out of that entire library that run 60 FPS. And a lot of those could be arcadey indie titles. Still, even if you're playing a top-down or a side scroller at 60 FPS, you should know the difference. All right, here's another prime example. I recently downloaded Borderlands 2 on Xbox One via backward compatibility games with gold for free. And after playing many hours during that same week of Borderlands 2 on my PC, I was downright disgusted by the presentation, the 30 FPS 720 up res to 1080, I think, is what you're looking at when you're playing the 360 version. The Handsome Collection on Xbox One two years ago, which ran at 1080p 60 locked, but let's take a look at what happens when this 1080p 30 footage gets changed back to 60. And viola. <laughs> or voila, if you want to be really fancy. But yeah, there it is. Smooth. Everything looks awesome, right? A massive difference. A huge difference in any game. I don't care if it's sports. It doesn't have to be a first-person shooter. Games just look better at 60 FPS. And now one thing that we can't take into consideration is what type of TV you're displaying all this on, or if you're displaying this on your phone. Remember I said in the beginning you need to change your YouTube setting for this video to 1080p 60 FPS to see the difference if you're watching on a mobile device. Another thing we can't factor in is frame interpolation. Now this is something that all new TVs have, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. 120 hertz TV or a 240 hertz TV, your TV is doing some dog crap frame interpolation where it predicts what the next frame is, or the other method is to, and this sounds really weird, is to insert a black frame in between each of the 60 frames to create some kind of whacked out, cohesive, smoother, faster image. And you'll see how terrible frame interpolation is. It's also called Pro Motion. It's called Motion. Your, every manufacturer has a different name for it. Motion Plus, they'll call it. But what you want to do if you have that TV, I know you've had it and you're used to it, but you need to turn it off because it makes movies at 24 frames look horrible. Like when you watch cartoons, they actually look really cheesy. And uh, speaking of cartoons, I mean, Borderlands looks like a cartoon. It looks great here. All right, here's Forza Horizon 3, the Blizzard Mountain DLC. And I'm driving a super fast Toyota Land Cruiser here. And we're starting off at 60 FPS. You can see the game the way it's supposed to look. 1080p ultra settings, 60 FPS. Everything looks great. And you can certainly play this game in 30 frames. I've done it on Xbox One. It's a Play Anywhere title. So you, oh my gosh, that's a huge jump. You get to see this game at 30 frames compared to 60. I think it was Digital Fondling that said that this game rivals high-end PCs because it runs textures at about high settings, they said, on console. But here you're looking at, like I said, Ultra, 60 FPS, 1080p on PC. Now, I don't play at any higher resolution than 1080p because I just have a standard HDTV, 4K TV on the way. I don't want to play on a monitor because I don't want a small monitor in my game room where I game on my couch. But let's look at this game at 30. Here it is at 30, certainly passable, and everything looks good, but can you start to see the stutter when we look at the difference between 60 and 30? Here's 60. And here comes 30. Do you see the difference yet? You can certainly play it like this, and you're probably used to seeing a game like this. And after we land here, we'll go back to 60. And it just makes games so much better. And the reason why I'm doing this video is I want everyone to start letting developers and Sony and Microsoft know frame rate is king. 
if you have to do that via Twitter, uh, do what you got to do. There are some of you that are probably have more clout than I do that could probably help out in this department, but frame rate is king. It really doesn't matter what game you're playing. If you're running a game at 60 frames, it makes all the difference in the world. So here it is at 60, here comes 30. See the way the camera moves? If you're as eagle-eyed as I am, or if you're used to 60, when the camera moves, you'll see a little bit of a, it's a stutter, it really is. It's like a flittering movement. You know, you don't have a smooth pan. You have a smooth pan. <laughs> so it makes a big difference. Let's go back to 60. Once you start moving the camera around, you'll notice everything looks a lot better. This is the way games are supposed to look and feel. You know, even as far back as the 90s, arcade games and some console games ran 60 FPS, but we didn't talk about this, did we? We didn't even talk about 60 FPS during the 360 and PS3 era. This is something that came as a narrative when we were trying to argue about the power difference between Xbox One and PS4. It came as an argument when developers were having a hard time getting a next-gen look on their games. And I think development and gameplay and game quality has suffered because of resolution and frame rate issues. But frame rate is easy, and the reason why I want to do this video is bring the option to console games, especially these new ones, the Pro and the Project Scorpio, bring the option to lower the graphic settings. If you lower a few things like shadows, lower some textures to achieve a locked 60 FPS, and then you'll finally see console gamers saying, wow, games really do look better. Because when you've been playing a 60 FPS game for a while, and then you turn it off and go play a 30 FPS game, <laughs> you're gonna notice that things start to look like an old 1970s elementary school film projector. And that's why, what have I said? Frame rate is king. All right, guys. Well, I feel like I really beat you over the head with this frame rate thing, but it's super important. And the big takeaway from this video is go to Twitter or go wherever it is that you want developers or Microsoft or Sony to hear. You want that compromise of either resolution or graphics or effects to achieve 60 FPS. What I want you to do is say, give us the option for better frame rates. It's supposed to be simple because you can just program that in and patch it. Super easy. And a lot of games on the PS4 Pro do this. They allow you to get a more stable frame rate at the cost of graphics instead of doing the checkerboard 4K. But we're already finding out, thanks to Dealer Gaming, that the Scorpio has plenty of power to run games at 60 FPS. Some, he has proven, to run at 4K 60 FPS. So this is what, what is it? Frame rate is key. This has been Cole Eastwood. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. That rating helps me a lot. I've removed video ads from my channel because nobody likes them. I don't like them and I don't want you to hate me for it. I want you guys to come here to get enjoyable, high quality presentation of gaming news, some opinions, some bull crap. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have not subscribed, please do so. You can click the little icon down there or you can, well, you know your way around. You've been on YouTube for a while. I'd really appreciate it, guys. Have a good one and I'll see you soon.